What's going on guys? Vic VP back with another Game Case Arcades video. Got another bar top in just in time for the Christmas season. This one's got a dedicated four-way on it. So I said in my last video, tis the season. Again, holiday gifts, nothing better than getting some classic arcade action in your home for whoever you want. So this right here is the official last one for the holidays. Uh, I posted that video of Gino's Arcade and I got a bunch of people saying, hey Vic, I want one for Christmas. Christmas is next week, it's too late for that. This one is the last official one going out. Again, I had a bunch that I made. I didn't make a lot of videos because I had to focus on the build. This one, I definitely had to record because this one's very unique. So this one, the customer messaged me from OfferUp, um, basically hit me up, said, hey Vic, my wife is a big Miss Pac-Man fan. What could we do to hook her up with some Miss Pac-Man and some classic arcades? We decided on the bar top for the size. Now the big thing again, just like I said with Gino's um, cabinet, um, Miss Pac-Man is another vertical game cabinet, but the big thing to stress about Miss Pac-Man is that you do need a dedicated four-way joystick. Basically joysticks, there are two or three real ways of doing joysticks. There's an eight-way, there's a four-way, and a two-way. Um, somebody probably gonna comment saying that there's more ways. I, I had an old Zippy one. I believe it was three ways, eight-way, four-way, two-way, or even one-way, which is up and down, which is really two-way. So basically, again, any customer that says to me, hey, Vic, I want Pac-Man, off the bat, I let them know, listen, this right here will play 15,000 games. It plays all your arcade classics, consoles, and such. But the biggest thing is that they are set to eight-way joysticks. Player one and player two are eight-way. Games, basically, really, if you think about it, 90% of the games use eight-way games like street fighter simpsons the tmnt basically all the consoles besides like snes using the d-pad and the nes and other ones that just use four d-pad the eight-way is really the way to go now we didn't have to actually put this dedicated four-way in i did tell the customer you could just basically open up the panel and then swap out the gate um the only thing about that is that it does get a little tedious um not to mention it is kind of sketchy because if you break the gate, it's it's a wrap. Let's get out of selfie mode and let's take a closer look at this cabinet. Now real quick, all the bad, just to understand how this joystick is, it's an eight way stick. So you can see here there's four arrows, up, down, left, right. Um, basically with an eight way, it lets you do like a full rotation, basically a full circle, um, eight way. So games like Street Fighter that you could jump forward, you do need that you know position, you need to set the gate so you could jump that way. Basically, this joystick, you can't really go diagonal. If you see carefully, it's actually pushing up and then to the right. I can't really hit this diagonal. The gate is blocking it. So you either have to go up, down, left, or right. So games like Pac-Man, where you really needed to hit the corners, a dedicated four-way is a big must. Going back to what I was talking about with the gate, this is the gate right here. Basically, you gotta take these four little black pins here, push them in, pull this plastic ring out and then spin the center out. Once I was explaining to the customer, he's like, Vic, this is too complicated. I don't even want to hear about it. So basically we got Sanwa sticks here. So these are eight way Sanwas. And from Game Room Solutions, shockingly, I got a Zippy joystick. Zippy looks like they updated their stuff apparently. Looks almost like a Sanwa, but this is a Zippy joystick. Now real quick, if you take a look at the center gate here, you can see the square off. That's eight way. So you could literally, you could hear all the buttons basically being triggered. You could hear the micro switches, I should say, getting triggered on an eight way. Whereas the four way, if I get a good one, you could kind of see it's in a diamond pattern. So you could kind of see, I'm also against the plexi, so let me move down. See, you could hear only four clicks go, whereas the eight way, you could really hear all the micro switches being hit. So again, this is a big deal, dedicated four-way. Dead center, again, Game Room Solutions cabinet. I even contacted Ryan, he's like, Vic, I suggest you get the ulti mark where you could pull this up and spin. I just didn't like it because putting it here, it's not in the center, it's not really how Pac-Man should be played. Pac-Man is dead middle and such as far as classic systems. So just keep that in mind, again, a four-way on a Game Room Solutions bar top. Just barely fit. Put it dead in the middle 
and I did have to bring it down a little bit because again, the actual joystick, I wish I had one. I usually have a whole stockpile. This is an actual four way. So as you can see, like you could see the actual size of the bottom of the joysticks. Some people would just think that it's just this stick. No, there's an actual base to it and such. So you could see how, for example, the sand was, you could see it's a rectangle kind of setup here to mount. Sand, uh, the zippy here, I actually span it sideways. Doesn't matter which way, it's all about how you wire it. So again, dedicated four way, enough room, enough clearance, LED buttons on this, no matter what with LED buttons, once you add the LED wire harness, wiring becomes a little bit of a mess, but it's not too bad. Again, at least we kept the wiring to the Zinmo intact and clean. Again, LED buttons on this set to fade, obviously with the LED strip. I set these to blue. So anytime the LEDs go to blue, your LED buttons will turn on. Artwork is great. Game Room Solutions, Ms. Pac-Man. This is on their actual main screen, the main like menu homepage. Really cool, very clean. I like it. Definitely like the unique pink team molding. Basically, I sent the picture to the customer. He goes, Vic, I want it just like this. I was thinking maybe yellow team molding, but it might've been too much. Pink is definitely very nice looking. You can see the right side on this. Again, pretty clean. They did have a Miss Pac-Man Galaga, which I was kind of interested in, but customer said, Vic, I just want Miss Pac-Man and we got Miss Pac-Man. As far as up top, again, we do have the Z313. Definitely did a little bit more cleaner. I put some like hot glue to keep this stuff down. We got our LED controller here in case he wants to turn them on and off. And it's awesome. The only big thing right now, I just come, um, you know, I do put the inserts here. Let me just turn off the LED. I do put the button inserts. My player one got faded. So player two is here. So before he gets it, I will just put back the sticker on that. Um, Game Room Solutions, again, supplying the artwork. I forgot, really, we didn't have that much time because of the order. Basically, the top here, exit mode, start, play. I don't really follow these because I don't have a mode. Um, again, these are kind of stupid, start and play. I do always exit, load, save, shift. So usually my shift is on the left and exit on the right, but I figure let me keep exit to exit. So you have to hold down shift and press exit. But again, the big deal honestly is this dedicated four way. So right now we're gonna go, I'll look up um, some Miss Pac-Man real quick. I'll go into MAME. I'm gonna start saying MAME because everybody makes fun of me. <laughs> go into MAME. Again, I always set my, my buttons up to basically skip letters. You're talking 2200 arcade games. So we're gonna go down to the end of N, basically N I should say, and I'm gonna go up and we will find Miss Pac-Man. So Miss Pac-Man, button one to start. Big thing I do wanna show off on this is that with Miss Pac-Man, I did not stretch the screen. I have this set to core provided, which basically means that is how the game is to be played. Now again, horizontal screen, vertical game. You do have these sidebars here. So just keep that in mind for the customer. I'm gonna make a video at the end of this, basically at the end of this video on how to change the video um, size, the ratio, the aspect ratio, in case you wanna change it. I mean, Miss Pac-Man stretched. I'm personally not a fan of it, but I will show you the way. Right now, let's load up some Miss Pac-Man. Let's check out this dedicated four-way. So real quick, I turned off the shop light so I don't have any glare. I put the volume up. We're gonna put a coin in. I'm gonna press start. This and this are basically connected together. So again, it's really good. Again, four-way joystick to really hit those very quick corners just to make sure that you hit it. So again, dedicated four-way on a Game Room Solutions bar top. I am using my camera viewfinder <laughs> to eat these ghosts up. Again, awesome, very clean, dedicated four-way. So the big thing, the kind of downside, I'll be brutally honest, I wanted, wanted so bad to do it. For a game such as Galaga, I did want to use this joystick and then I wanted to map this button um, to uh, the fire button. This way you could use it. But unfortunately, in a Raspberry Pi setup, it's it's complicated, it's very difficult. Uh, the Zinmos are separated into two separate kind of inputs. And again, this joystick is really connected to this joystick. So there's four wires coming here into the Zinmo. 
basically I have these wires joining together in the middle and then to the Zinmo. So these, again, that was a one little downside. I did wish I could get Galaga button to work on this, but again, using the Zinmos, I couldn't do it. Um, so again, we have Miss Pac-Man here. Uh, if I do this one-handed, I'm gonna real quick, just cause I could, I'm gonna go and just set this video. I'm not gonna save it, but I'm gonna set the video to 16 by nine, just to show you like, I mean, me personally, I'm not, I'm not a fan of how this looks. Maybe the customer does. Again, this is 16 by nine stretch. So again, it is a 22 inch bar top. So some people say, you know what? Keep it stretched. To me, it's just not correct. The other option is to do four by three. Uh, four by three isn't, it still has your sidebars, but it's still stretched really, to be honest. Um, again, core provided is set to how the game really should be. So again, you could use joystick one. It's just with this being set to eight way, you could just see right now, like I was trying to go up, it was going left and right. The eight ways on Pac-Man is just, it's not that great. In all honesty, games like Pac-Man and really uh, Donkey Kong. Um, those are the real ones I do notice that like eight ways are just butchered. Like you, you just lose, you lose control. Um, again, you do need dedicated four way for that. For right now, I'm gonna switch this back to core provided. Just so you guys could see. Again, that to me, it's awesome. And I do love that. Luckily, I got this centered. I got the four way dead center and that really got me excited. Um, sounds weird, but it's just, it's perfect. I originally, let me lower this. I originally wanted this down here, but there was no way. There was just no way to get that because we do have this, basically this piece here is in the way. And then not to mention, we have the joystick. As you can see, it is set sideways, that zippy. It would have crashed into these. It wouldn't have worked. I only had one shot at cutting this panel and I got it perfect. I mean, again, it looks awesome. Again, a dedicated four-way on a Game Room Solutions bar top. Now, here's a big thing. I do want to get into my own woodworking. It's going to be tough. I have a lot of ideas, but Game Room Solutions luckily cuts the actual depth and such for joysticks. I didn't do that. I honestly don't have the tools for it nor the knowledge on how to do it. So the big thing I did notice was if I take this off, again, this is a zippy joystick. I went cheap on the, on the zippy. Not cheap in a bad way. It's just, it's a dedicated four way. I don't really see that joystick being used a lot besides Miss Pac-Man. Now the big thing is I'm gonna put the ball on. This is the height it would have been. This is standard, meaning the wood's not cut, the route, it's not routed. And now you really don't have a good grip on this. I mean, really Pac-Man players, I see them like grip it like this and go hard. I can't even spin the joystick. So went on Amazon and I basically found the rod extender. Came in a pack of two, you only really need one. So again, in case anybody that's looking to do this, just one rod extender really made it work very well. So as you can see now, rod extension, I could put my hand down and I could really rock Miss Pac-Man. So again, dedicated four way. I keep saying it. <laughs> uh, it's very funny again. Ryan Game Room Solutions was like, I don't think that's gonna be possible. I'll send him this video. It is possible. It does look cool. I was playing with my wife and I know somebody in the comments is gonna be like, oh man, you know what I could tell right away? You're playing some Street Fighter. Player two here could technically nudge this joystick and then cause your character to move, but you really have to like jump. It's not like it's in the way. I mean, again, I'm not even like joking. Like it's not that close for me to hit it. I originally was gonna put like a button here to activate the ground to make it active, but it was just gonna, it wasn't gonna be enough like time to make it and such. And I really didn't wanna risk anything to the cabinet. So yes, I know somebody's gonna say it's stupid. You're gonna be able to move player one, but in all honesty, it's not that bad. Just real quick, let's take a look at the back. It's the one thing about my workbench is a little bit skinny. Um, so I don't want to put too much stretch on the door, but take a look at the back again. Z313 stereo speakers, 50 watts with the subwoofer. They must have updated something with the Z313 because now it's like very clean hidden. Um, all like the fuse holders and everything. So this looks great. 
Um, customer did order the stand. We ordered it actually like four days after. Um, it's not gonna get here, at least on my end, for me to build it. So I do have the stand going to the customer. He basically still has access to the four points. There's basically four areas here where you could just put the bolt in. So he's gonna have to build it on his own. It's really not that bad. But again, black cabinet, Miss Pac-Man artwork. Two Sanwas blue tops on this and the dedicated four-way LED buttons was requested. Yellow on top, blue on the bottom, and there you have it. Again, I do read your comments, guys. I do message you guys. Could always message me on Instagram. Uh, I'll, I did have somebody message me about asking me about how the load and save states were set and stuff helped and guided him through basically making it. Again, this does have four players on it. So we do have two wireless PS3 style controllers and the two arcade sticks. So real quick, I always do the Simpsons. I mean, it's such an iconic game. Um, but for another four player, I will load up, uh, just for fun, we'll do Sunset Riders. Sunset Riders is a great game. Again, uh, he does, I believe there is family, so it's him, the wife, I believe there's a couple of kids, so Sunset Riders. Again, we're gonna do a tutorial at the end on how to make this all work. Let me turn off my workbench light. All that boots on. Awesome, so player one, player two, my PlayStation controller will turn off. <laughs> After five minutes of not being used, the joysticks, the controllers will turn off. You basically turn them on. This one is player three. So as you can see, even in the game, you just turn them on and they work. Sunset Riders actually doesn't recognize start. You gotta like press A button. There we go, X. So that one and that one, there we go. So real quick, just to show off the four, the eight way, you could kind of see how he's looking around. You could see right there. See, that's an eight way. Eight way hitting that corner, he's looking up. I'm gonna take control of player one. And as you could see, it really doesn't let you do that kind of corner action. That's why a dedicated four way, when it comes to this Pac-Man, I'm gonna take the same guy, hit the corner, and that, again, is an eight-way. So this is an eight-way game. Uh, real quick, load and save state. So shift is your main button. You have to hold down shift. You press save. And it basically has little writing that says, hey, you saved. If we move our characters a little. So PlayStation controllers. I'm going to load. So hold down shift and load. And it brought us back. Easy stuff. Shift, exit. And we are back. Now the big thing that I did notice when I do make my builds now, and I'm gonna be doing it, um, so everybody knows the biggest game that everybody all the time when once they get these things home, the first thing that they load they do load up is NBA Jam. Now NBA Jam before I had NBA Jam and then I had NBA Jam Tournament Edition. Here's the big thing that I've done for all my games on the holiday: NBA Jam Regular is set to two player. NBA Jam Tournament is set to four player. So I get that all the time. Hey Vic, we wanna play one-on-one. -on -one. You do need a keyboard, it's a quick, easy fix. Not many people have a wired or a wireless keyboard handy, but just real quick, I'm gonna load up regular NBA Jam just to show you again that it's basically set to two player. So one player and two players. So we're gonna insert our coins. Again, this is like the biggest thing that I've, I've I've, I've understood. Literally, everyone gets this home. I guess they all look for NBA Jam, and then they just want to play one-on-one, -on -one, the real arcade way to play it. Again, 1v1 on arcade sticks. Now, the big thing about like this game, for example, I always suggest any game, especially when it comes to arcade, not all the buttons are exactly the same when it comes to each game. So you might want to take a quick second and just kind of figure out what button is what so for example this button here is to run i believe button two is to pass and button one is to shoot so it's one two three that's what's being used here one two three so here we go i'm gonna take this to the house oh i just got robbed pass it okay here we go i'll take this one to the house oh, oh i thought i missed all right here we go go for it go for it oh Oh, I took the shot, one-handed on it. But yes, there you guys have it. NBA Jam, you shift, you exit out, brings it back. You know we gotta do it. You know it.
We're going to it. We're gonna go right now. I usually like to do regular Street Fighter, but just to make it so quick and easy to get it, we're gonna load up Super Street Fighter 2 just to seal the deal. I gotta hit this one-handed Hadouken. <laughs> you guys just gotta wait for the one-handed Hadouken on this. So we're gonna skip this cutscene. I always do two players. This is how I usually test. I do one player start, and then I do two player start. This way I know that both start buttons work. If you do press two player start, it activates both starts. So again, if you are doing a button test, Street Fighter is the way to go. Basically pick your characters. You know, you test your left and your right. Let's see. There it is. Yes. No BS. That is the one end that I do. Can I do it on Ken? No. That's going the opposite way. My hand is just so used to six to three. So six o'clock to three o'clock. That's how I always say it. And there you guys have it. Street Fighter, Miss Pac-Man. This is set for the Christmas season. This ends 2020. Vic VP, Game Case Arcades.